Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm a Christian pastor, and I'm out preaching the gospel, and just, I know you don't want to think about important things after fireworks, but I wanted to just remind you that there is a God in the universe, and that we are accountable to Him, and we're all about our lives, and just like the fireworks go off, our lives are going to end very soon. We live only a short time in this world, and so it's important for us to take important things to mind. And the important things to mind is that the God of the Bible does exist, and that someday we're all going to stand before Him and give an account of our lives. And so as you're going today, I just want to give you a reminder that there, are, there is more to life than uh, just eating and drinking, that we are eternal beings, that we live forever, and that God has made a way for us to have salvation in Jesus Christ. And so I'm a Christian pastor. I've been a Methodist pastor. I've been a Presbyterian pastor. But the problem with too many pastors is that they're ashamed of the gospel and they won't go out of their pulpits and go out in the streets and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And too many Christians are really actually ashamed of knowing Jesus Christ. But I'm not ashamed to come out and tell people about who Jesus Christ is. You see, the Bible tells us that we've all sinned before God. There's not a person walking by me that has not committed sin before God. But God has made a way for us. What's that? All the sins, baby. Well, then you could have forgiveness in Jesus Christ. I mean, we all have. But you've got to turn to Christ. He's not going to automatically forgive you. So the God of the Bible... The God of the Bible has said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. You see, people walk by, I feel like the invisible man, because people either ignore me or laugh at me. But you see, we have expiration dates on us. You're going to stop living someday. And the Bible says, first comes death and then the judgment. And we don't like to think about those things on a beautiful Saturday night, but these are realities. We don't know the day or the hour in which we'll go see and be with God. And so are you ready? Are you ready to meet God? If something were to happen to you this night or this day on the way home, are you ready to meet God? You can laugh all you want, but someday you will stand before God. You will stand before God and give an account. And if your life is not right with God. There's only one way to be made right with God, and that, that is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, there's Christians even walking by me. You might even go to church, but you keep your Christianity in the walls of the church. Biblical Christianity is supposed to be proclaimed in all the world. And there are men throughout the ages like George Whitfield and John Wesley that went out to the streets and proclaimed the gospel to people. And so I'm here to remind you that you are mortal beings, but you are also, what's that? You can laugh, sir, all you want, but you're, you, you have an expiration date, and you are going to stand before God someday. You're going to give an account before God and remember this day. But there's only one way that we could be made right with God, and that's through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross so that you can have forgiveness of your sins. There's no other way. You are correct, and I believe in him. Amen, sister. And I believe in you standing up there and preaching. I appreciate that very You're much. Welcome. It's hard to do, no, but I'm doing it anyways. I know, because you probably get a lot of people that just yeah. are animals. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but you're doing what God asks. Thank you so much for the encouragement. I know, I know it sounds strange to have somebody stand up here after fireworks, but the reason is, is because we are people that will give an account to God someday. Every person that is walking by me, every person on the face of the earth will someday give an account to God. But you see, God has shown his love towards us in that he's given us Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Son of Man. Jesus was fully God and fully man. And when Jesus came into this world, not only did he set a good example for us, but you see, Jesus Christ lived a perfect life. And the Bible says that all who believe in Jesus Christ 
that your sins will be forgiven. That God, all your sins that you've ever committed in your life will be washed away. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And so the God of the Bible, the God of the Bible, there's only one God. And He says in the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt have no other gods before Me. You see, the God of the Bible, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christianity believes in one God. But there's three persons. And God the Father has given us Jesus Christ the Son so that we might have forgiveness of our sins. Because Jesus Christ, you see, who was fully God and fully man, when He lived in this earth, He lived a perfect life. And then when He went to the cross, you see, Jesus Christ, when He was on the cross, He took the sins of all who believe in Him. He took the punishment that our sins deserve. And all we need to do as human beings is to offer salvation for all people to believe in Christ, to believe in the sacrifice that He made, that He died for sinners. And the Bible says that we must be born again. You see, the only way that we can be made right with God is that we must be born again. And the only way that we could be born again is by the Spirit of God taking our stone-cold hearts. You see, the Bible tells us in Ezekiel chapter 36 that we have hearts of stone and that unless God takes away our hearts of stones and gives us a heart of flesh that we could respond to God, that God will forgive us of our sins. And so in Jesus Christ, He's made a way. You see, the Gospel, Christianity, Biblical Christianity, you see all these churches around here, but so many of them have lost and left the true Gospel of Jesus Christ. They got rainbows out in front of their churches, you see, because the God of the Bible is a God of holiness. God requires us to be holy, but we've all sinned before God, and the only way that we can be made right with God is through the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Christ has come into this world. God Himself, the second person of the Holy Trinity, has come into this world in order to atone for our sins. You see, when Jesus Christ went to the cross, He made a way for anybody who believes in Him. He took the punishment that I deserve because I'm a sinner just like you. But the difference between somebody who believes in Jesus Christ and somebody who doesn't is that you will carry your sin or Jesus Christ will carry your sin. And so what God calls upon us to do is to put our hope and our faith in Jesus Christ. You see, that's what it's all about, talking about things that are so important. You see, in this life, we only care about simple things. We just saw some fireworks, and you saw how fast they went. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that our life is just like a flash. You know, we feel like we're going to live forever, but we're not living forever. We all have expiration dates upon us. And we don't like that, but the reality is that we will all stand before God someday. And if we are in Jesus Christ, if we put our faith in Christ, God will forgive us. He'll wash away our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ because He took our sins on Him on our behalf. And if you go before God, if you go before God without having your sins forgiven in Jesus Christ, you see the Bible tells us that we will be cast away from the presence of God. This is what churches used to preach, but churches have lost their way. Pastors have lost their way. Pastors are more concerned about building their business church than they are about preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and telling people the way of salvation, that we must be born again. And the only way... You grace on the vine, that's why. Yeah, I think you're right. You see the... I think you're right. Thank you. And so the, the Bible, God has made a way for us to have that salvation, and that is only through the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ was fully God, and Jesus Christ was fully man, and He gave us forgiveness of our sins. And so I come out and take my Saturday night, because me preaching here tonight can be an opportunity for your life to be changed forever. That's why I come out here. 
is because somebody might hear the message that I'm telling you, that the God of the Bible is the only true God, and there's only one way of salvation, and that's through Jesus Christ, and that we have to put our faith in Jesus Christ. And so if you take time and put your faith in Christ, then God himself will forgive you of your sins. God himself will grant you forgiveness of sins. And so the opportunity is for anybody who would come to the Christ, Jesus Christ tonight. And all you need to do is take some time and put, put your faith in Him to trust in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. You see, when you, Jesus Christ is real. You know, all other religions are false religions. There's only one true God, and He's the God that has revealed Himself in the pages of the Bible. You see, the God of the Bible is the only true God. And he says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And this God says that we all have sinned before him. And the only way that we could be forgiven of our sins, the only way that we could have our sins taken away is by the blood of Jesus Christ. What that means is that anybody who believes and puts their faith in the sacrifice, atoning death of Jesus Christ, the promise of God is that God the Father says that I will forgive all your sin on behalf of Jesus Christ. I mean, what a beautiful message that is. But you see, we live in a world where people try to say that, you know, Christianity is just one among all religions and all religions are the same. There's only one true God and there's only one true way of being forgiven of your sins, and that's through Jesus Christ, who died upon the cross, so that you can have forgiveness of sins. You see, for the Bible says, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetheart. If you believe in Jesus Christ, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, God has made a promise to himself. And the promise that God has made to himself is on behalf of Jesus Christ upon the cross that he'll forgive us. What's that? Well, head to home. But someday you're going to go home to heaven. Are you ready to face God? I am. Are you really? Are you free? Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ? He so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That's exactly right. So, amen. And there's no other way of salvation than through Jesus Christ. But it's not enough just to quote the verse. You must believe and follow Jesus Christ. And so I come out here tonight because I believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe what the Bible says. You see, people don't care anymore. But you're, you're a mortal being and you have an expiration date, sir. Someday you will stand before God. And are you ready? If you are not ready and if you are not in Christ then you, God will cast you out of his presence. That's, what the, that's the only determiner of truth. You see, the Bible, the Bible says that this is the revelation of the one and only true God, and he's revealed himself in the pages of the Bible. See, there's not many religions. There's only one true religion. And God has revealed all that we need to know within the pages of the Bible, brothers and sisters. And if you put your faith in Christ... God will forgive you of your sins. He will transform you. You must be born again. That's the only way that we can be made right with God. And I hope that you take this to heart because I care enough about you so that if you put your faith in Christ, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, God says that he will forgive you of your sins. There's no other way to have your sins taken away. There's no other way. You cannot do enough good works. You can't give all the money that you have to the poor. You can't take communion. That's not going to take away your sins. The only way that our sins can and will be forgiven is because Jesus Christ went to the cross. And when Jesus Christ went to the cross, he went there to take the punishment that I deserve. And if you believe in him, he'll take away your sin because he, will be, he was punished on behalf of sinners. You see, so all it is, the Bible says, all who believe or all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And not just any God. We're not talking about Allah. We're not talking about Buddha. 
We're talking about Yahweh. We're talking about the one and only true Trinitarian God who has revealed himself in the pages of the Bible. You see, the Bible is the Word of God, and only in the Bible will we have the truth of what the Scriptures are all about. You see, how else will you know? All you can do is guess at who God is if there is a God, but the Bible tells us very clearly that says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. You see, the Bible does not argue for the existence of God. It simply tells you that God exists. I mean, think about how vast this universe is. Where did this universe come from? Where did you come from? Where did that sense of right and wrong come from? The only place that that comes from is because God has written His law in our hearts. And that's why you know what's right and what's wrong. But the only way to ultimately know what's right and what's wrong is to read the Bible. And when we read the Bible, we learn that we're sinners before God. And there's only one way that God can and will take away our sins. And that is through what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago on the cross. When Jesus Christ died upon the cross, He took the sin, the punishment of the sin that we deserve all who believe in Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, God the Father punished Jesus Christ. You see, we all deserve, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> we all deserve punishment for our sin. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. We have sinful natures, and because we have sinful natures, then comes our sinful actions. You see, but if we come to Christ, God tells us that He will give us a new heart. That's why the Bible says in John chapter 3 that you must be born again. The only way to be born again is by the power of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. And as He works upon our lives, and as you have faith in Him, God will regenerate your heart. He'll take away your heart of stone, as it says in Ezekiel chapter 36. And He'll give you a heart that can respond to God. You see, if the Holy Spirit does not do a work in your life, you cannot respond to God. And you remain dead in your trespasses and your sins. But the glorious gospel is that God loves us in Jesus Christ. God has shown to us His love. It says in Romans, for God has manifested or shown to us in love, His love to us, in that He died for us. Jesus Christ died for us and died on behalf of sinners. You see, if you believe this message, your life will be changed not just today, <coughs> but for all eternity. You see, I don't have something cheap to give you. I have something, a message to proclaim that is the most important message if you take it to heart that's more important than what they were singing about sex, drugs, and rock and roll and living for today. You see, as human beings, we're not just going to die and that's it. What happens to us after we die? Well, the Bible, no, we live forever. We continue on. That, yeah, you do believe that. You think we're just dust? Yes. Dust in the wind? Yes, then why do you love your son? Oh, my son. Yeah, exactly, because there's deep meaning behind it. No, I can't. You, no, you don't. You believe in something higher or else you would not have love for your son. The love you have for your son proves that you know that you're more than a piece of dirt and a piece of dust. You know that you are eternal. You can mock all you want, but someday your child will teach you about Christ. I believe he will. I hope you, son, learn about Christ. That tonight, you can come to Jesus Christ. Young ladies, this message for you. I care enough about you. If you put your hope and faith in Jesus Christ, I know I sound like I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. I have a master's degree in divinity. I've gone to seminary. But you see, God... God has made a way for us. God has made a way for us to have salvation. And that salvation is in Jesus Christ. <coughs> and so I come out here tonight. I come out here tonight as a Christian pastor. I'm a Christian pastor. I believe in God 
has, who has revealed himself in the Bible. I have been a Methodist pastor. I've been a Presbyterian pastor. But you see, pastors have lost their way. Pastors only care about building their churches now. Pastors only care about the money you give in, the, in their plates. They don't care about your eternal soul. They care about you putting money in the plate. And so they don't tell you the truth. The truth is, is that you are a sinner, and the only way that you could be made right with God is by having faith in Jesus Christ. But you see, pastors in churches nowadays are not going to tell you this, and I'll tell you why. Because people get offended when you tell them that they're sinners. And we are all sinners. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But you see, God has made a way for us to have our sins taken away. It's by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. When Jesus went to the cross, he died on behalf of sinners. Are you laughing at me, sir? You know why? Because I believe in something more than you do. I do believe in something more than you do. I believe you are an eternal being and you're going to stand before God someday and give an account. And if you're not right with God, he's going to say to you, depart from me. But he will say to you, if you are in Christ, he will say to you, you are my son. I forgive you of your sins. You can mock all you want, son. Someday you will stand before God. It doesn't matter how old you are. Because we all have expiration dates upon us. We know that we're eternal beings. It doesn't matter how old you are. You could be an old man or a young lady. But we will someday, our hearts are going to stop beating. And when they do... Will you be prepared to meet God? And the God, God of the Bible says that there's only one way, and that's through faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe that, sir? Do you believe that, sir? Or are you too afraid to talk? <clears throat> you don't really believe in anything, I don't think. <clears throat> you see, there's only one way of salvation, sir, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, we're, but science word. makes no sense You're if there is no God. Right. Wait, think about it. <laughs> no, no. no, think I'm about it. No, you can't. No, you can't. You can't win. Yeah, faith. I'm going to tell you why. Because your faith in science is found. Science makes no sense if there is no God. I would debate you anytime. Norman Patterson is my name, and I'll be glad to debate you because science makes no sense if all we are is chance, random acts of evolution. That's the dumbest thing that anybody could believe in. Evolution is the most foolish thing. Yeah, you don't even believe that, or else you wouldn't argue with me. You see, because God has made a way for us to have salvation in Jesus Christ. And that's why I come out here tonight, is to tell people that they can have forgiveness of sins through faith in Jesus Christ. There's just no other way to have that salvation than through Jesus. You see, people are trying to get rid of their sins or they think that they're not sinners. But we all know, we all know that we have committed sins. That's why you feel guilty when you do things. That's why you feel guilty when you lie or you steal or you cheat. You feel guilty because the law of God is written on your heart. And when you wake up three in the morning after doing something wrong, what do you do with your sin? There's only one way that the Bible has made for us to have our sins taken away. And the only way that God <coughs> has <coughs> made for us to have our sins taken away is through the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The claims of Jesus Christ of the Bible says that He is truly God and that there's no other way to be made right with God than through what Christ, Jesus Christ, has done for us upon the cross. And so I have faith enough to come out here tonight in hopes that somebody will believe in the God of the Bible that he's made a way of salvation for us. And the way of salvation is the old message that the old-time preachers used to preach. You see, the old-time preachers used to preach... I've I'm a Methodist. I've been a Methodist. Um, John Wesley used to preach the gospel. He used to go out on the streets and tell people how they could be made right with God. And the only way that you could be made right with God is through Jesus Christ, His only Son, 
who died upon the cross. And the reason Jesus Christ died upon the cross is so that you can have a way of having your sins forgiven. You see, if you have faith in Christ, that means Christ was crucified on your behalf. He takes away your sin. He takes the punishment that you deserve. That's the old time gospel that they used to preach. But you see, churches, they don't preach it anymore. We got rainbow churches. We got churches that care about everything but telling people the truth of how they could be saved in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and because they're not preaching it, I'm coming out into the streets. How you doing, sir? Wonderful, my friend. Good. Do you have faith in Christ? Here, my friend. Do you believe in Christ? Of course I do. Wonderful. I believe in God. Well, Jesus is I the only way to God. I believe in God. Think about that. Read John chapter 3, okay? I love the Bible. Wonderful. Great story. No, it's the truth, revealed truth of God. Without the Bible, you cannot make sense of anything. I'm going to prove Christianity to you right now. The impossibility of the contrary. Think about that. <laughs> the impo you take care, brother. Think, look into Jesus. <coughs> God bless you, sir. I hope you come to faith.